morning, my friends. It's your old pal, Jordan the Lion. How are you all doing today? Excellent. I'm doing great too. Today, we are invited to tour Liberace's mansion in Las Vegas. So today, we're gonna head off and explore the old house that Liberace called home. He had a lot of performances here in Vegas. I mean, he pretty much made this his home for many years. So this should be really fascinating to get inside. Now, I had seen years ago that this house was in serious disrepair and someone bought it and has put a lot of time and a lot of money, years worth, into restoring this house. So it's really cool that they were nice enough to invite us to come tour today. We're gonna to do a special Patreon sunglass vlog today for Mary Arredondo. Mary, I hope you enjoy this vlog just as much as everyone else. Have a great day, everyone. Days with Jordan the Lion, it begins right now. Well, here we are. The mansion, I showed a little bit of the outside the last time we were here, but today we actually get to tour the inside. Can't wait to see this. You gotta love all the little accents on the outside of the house that still show you this was Liberace's mansion. All the L's going all along the fence. And of course, that. Take a look at the doors, isn't that great? Liberace was, if nothing else, extravagant. All right, my friends. I have just been given the tour and turned loose on the Liberace Mansion of Las Vegas. This place is amazing. You're gonna love it. One of the things that's really remarkable is that if you know how popular Liberace was, you know that he entertained a lot of guests. So people from Mae West to Barbara Streisand, Barry Manilow, Michael Jackson, they all have been entertained here. So as soon as we walk in, you see on the mirror it says, I don't give concerts, I put on a show, Liberace. And the owner actually was the one that first gave me the tour. And he told me a lot of the stories about this. And what's great is that he said he started researching, just looking around um, online for Behind the Candelabra. Someone had recommended that to him. And he was looking on YouTube and saw that they were trying to save the Liberace Mansion, so he called up, made an appointment the next day to see it, and he bought it. <laughs> and spent the last couple of years not only fixing it up, but there were photos taken just a few days after Liberace passed away of the inside of this house, so he has spent time tracking down as much of the original furniture as he can to make it authentic. So think of that as we walk around. The care put into this is just unbelievable. And I'll show you some things he pointed out, like he tried to keep things that didn't need to be replaced original. So like this wallpaper that lines the entryways, that is all the original. You can see original nail holes. Now he said when he purchased it, um, he said that it basically was an abandoned property and that um, squatters were showing up, stealing things, things like that were happening. So he said some of the things were pretty tricky, but you'll notice here, there's another quote by him that says, too much of a good thing is wonderful. Liberace, now look at that fireplace. And he said one of the great things is that so many people have found out that he has taken the time to restore this, that people that have things that Liberace gifted them have donated it. So, take a look at that sofa set and everything. Isn't that amazing? The candelabras everywhere. And he said that the lighter here and ashtray were original to the house and gifted to him. Now, when we started talking, he asked me how I got into this and I told him a little of my history and said that one of the things, one of my favorite things that I've ever vlogged was Oscar Wilde. And he said, it's interesting that you should mention that because the art on this glass was by one of Oscar's boyfriends, Aubrey Beardsley. And you can see where it says 1895 here. I'm trying to keep my reflection out, sorry. 
But yeah, that's, he had all that stuff made. So most of his house is glass. I mean, it's uh, mirrors. Now, one of the things that's interesting, he pointed out was that the house is extremely well made. You can't hear anything going on on the outside. So we've now seen the front living room when you walk in, we just came in through there. So now we're gonna wander down through here. And what was interesting also, there's more of that art, that etching. I'm trying to get a little closer so that you can see some of the detail in it. Is that this piano is very, very rare. In fact, he said you can, there was only one person he could find that can even tune it because the strings and everything don't work the normal way like a harp or anything like that. They go in different directions all over the place. So they said that um, there was a World's Fair, I believe in 1912, and they built a pyramid out of these type of pianos and then burned them all. So there are very few left, and this was one of Liberace's. Now take a look at this. We have more of the etching and everything on the windows and the glass over here. But what's interesting is that this piano was original to the house because it's a Baldwin and he was a Baldwin guy. But he pointed out that this is Liberace's original tip jar from when he very first started to perform anywhere in nightclubs, he purchased that. And he showed me, he said, look, it's handmade. You can tell because of the spacing between the gold, it's not perfect. You can see that it's varying widths and everything. How cool is that that I'm allowed to touch <laughs> Liberace's original tip jar. Now this is one of the things that really blew me away the most. Check out this bar. That is one of the most amazing custom made bars I've ever seen in my life. Look at all the music notes right over here. And then you can see the piano with his signature. Isn't that wonderful? And the notes and everything go all the way around the side. Then look at the classic look of the bar. It even says bar on the door. And then it says, has the Liberace logo right there. And look at the ceilings. He was such a fan of the Palace of Versailles that that was the inspiration for the ceilings here. So there you can see where we just came from, all the Beardsley etching and everything. He was showing me, he said, you know, it's got uh, what you would expect. You have women's anatomy hanging out. You have the kids, the peacocks and everything. You can see the peacock in there. I just love that, the detail on that art. You can see the little kids down there. There's another little dining table here. We'll go in there eventually, but we're gonna leave the very, very rare piano, the Chickering. And this was the dining room where he would host his guests for dinner. And don't worry, we will come back to this very quickly. I just wanna show you this real quick. Not real quick, but Look at this. Now he said the costumes behind those doors were donated. So take a look at how beautiful this room is. The play settings and everything. Now he said that he actually, you know, people do live here. He has a caretaker here and everything, but they um, allow people to rent it for art shows, weddings, things like that. And the man who owns it said he's thought, you know, if I ever decide to sell it, I want to make it available to the arts, have people perform here. So look at Liberace's tux in here. Look at the shoes. Now what's interesting also is that he did not hesitate to tell me and my friends that came with me today that there is a lot of paranormal activity here. He said, things happen all the time. He said he'll walk into a room and he'll smell 
and see cigarette smoke and he doesn't allow smoking here. He said he'll hear the grand piano go off during the day, like you'll hear someone playing, all kinds of different things. He said you'll, they have cameras um, in every corner of the room, or in every room, and he said it's caught apparitions constantly. And my friends that I came with said, we all had the same reaction. There were three rooms that when we walked into, look at that fireplace, isn't that amazing? Three rooms that we walked into, we all said, I feel something in here. Like I feel like he's in here. I'll take a look at this costume. Pretty extravagant, huh? That is incredible. All right, look at that china too. Now he loved to cook. He was a legendary cook. In fact, when he would have um, holidays or anything, he would fly people to wherever he was going to host a dinner and uh, prepare it. And the owner said, as we were walking around, he said, do you know who Scott Thorson is? And I said, oh yeah, I saw behind the candelabra. He said, yeah, he was here last week. So now this, this little private room, they don't normally show it on tours, but he said, I'll let you show it. This is now a like green room for people getting married here. They said that was his secret exit. He could come and go from here without people waiting out front and everything seeing him. And they said that now um, we went in there. It's now a uh, bedroom, has two beds and everything, but was originally the, uh, actually I think he said we can go in there. So it was originally the casino room because his mother loved to play the slot machines. So his mother would pretty much hang out in the, uh, this room most of the time that she was here visiting. And he said they did a little reworking in here because there was originally an entryway, like a stairwell or something that came from there. And they said, or like a doorway. But he just said we needed this space at the time for what we were using it for as more of a bedroom, but really cool, huh? Just to get to see in this house and to know that the person that owns it is such a huge fan of history in the same way we are. I mean, when he told me this story and said, well, I saw a YouTube video of people saying, you know, save the Liberace mansion. He said, I just, you know, I had to, I just, to me, you know, I'm from, he said, I'm from London and we save stuff there. So he said, I just couldn't believe that nobody wanted this place. Now check this out. As we go through the kitchen here for this little um, wedding party room, I guess you would call it. Look at that art. Now we're going to what they have turned into and uh, get ready for this, what they've turned into a party room, like for um, events, an events room. This was where his pool used to be, his swimming pool. Look at that piano. So what I was told was that originally, um, Ted Turner's brother purchased this house and very quickly filled in the pool that was right here and put like a carport or something, but the current owner said it just wasn't very well done, so he took the care to do that. Now he cares so much that this particular piano was not Liberace's piano. Look at the chandeliers, isn't that just incredible? That particular one was not, but he actually paid to have that made for people that have events here. Look how beautiful that is. He even put the Liberace L on there. Isn't that incredible? So we just came from that door. And now we're gonna walk down here 
And he explained to me that, of course, last year would have been Liberace's 100th birthday. So the owner decided to do a little tribute and he paid for a marble grand piano to be made in Liberace's honor. And that's what's back here in this corner. Take a look at this. Now you know what marble is, so imagine how heavy that is. How beautiful that is. <laughs> no, seriously, it's, it's heavy. Marble's heavy. But look at this. He put a little centennial plaque on here that you can probably see off to the side. It says the centennial, centennial piano. 1919 to 19 or 2019 and then right over here he put another little plaque denoting the same thing pretty cool huh now look at this bar area this is also pretty amazing. Painted onto the bricks. And then look at the footrest under the bar. Now, another great fact about this house and about the man who owns it, he actually got it designated a historic residence or a historic building on the National Registry. And for this area, they didn't have one until then. So this was the very first house in 2016. Look at the art. You've got his hands down here. These are actually bathrooms. You can go to the bathroom, I believe. They have all kinds of art on the walls. And then some memorabilia here in the case. Various different things. Not for sale, it just looks like it with the prices. Just a display thing. Little display case. All right, are you ready for this? Can you believe that we are in Liberace's mansion? I mean, it, did you notice there's like a piano literally in every room and there's his name on the glass? And this is awesome too, take a look at this. A photo with Liberace and the Queen Mother. And then as we move over here, this is with Queen Elizabeth. Now right in front of us is a player piano and it actually has his music in it. Isn't that great? So they left us some quarters up here to give a little sample. The true experience in Liberace's house. Now to the right of us, that's the room that we've already toured and I just realized as I was walking around that I forgot to show you something inside that big Baldwin grand piano. When we were over here, they were showing us that this was his travel piano. So the lid on it actually was, uh, was plastic so that people could see in. But look, he signed the inside. All right, we're going back the way we came towards the player piano. And all of these columns he had imported from Greece. And as I mentioned earlier, the ceilings were 
inspired by the Palace of Versailles. This whole section was, and this is actually the connector because this was one house when he bought it, and then this was a second house over there. He bought the two houses and connected them right here. So look at this. Isn't this amazing? I'm gonna try and slow it down a little bit here because there's so much stuff in here. I want you to be able to take in some of the beauty. Look at all that. Isn't that incredible? And remember what I said, he went out of his way to get as much of the original stuff, track it down as he could. Now, if you've ever seen the opening for Liberace's show, they film him in a hot tub. That's actually this hot tub that we're gonna see. Look at this. Look at that skylight, wow. So this is one of the rooms that when we toured, we immediately, just walking in here, and then what you'll see to the left, we said, hey, like he's in here with us. Something is, is just different. He's definitely here. But look, look at the muraling going all the way around the ceiling, and wait till you see what's over here. <laughs> So there's that, there's that tub. There's that hot tub. Believe it or not, he said for all the people that had kind of like broken into it while it wasn't really being used or anything and the things that were stolen, he said the tub is, is original. So, but then look at the top. There's Lee, Lee Liberace right there. His face. His hands, the little cherubs above him with the piano. Isn't that amazing? Now I knew this before I had come, but I kind of forgot it until we started walking around here is that the owner said, well, you know, this right in here was his master bedroom. And he said, uh, take a look at this, that the Sistine Chapel painting that he did in here was done by one of Michelangelo's relatives that he was able to track down and hire. And it's actually noted, you can see all this on the walls. See right up here, it says Stefano Angelo Falk in cooperation with Michelangelo Bonarotti, created this Liberace Sistine Chapel ceiling. So this was Liberace's bedroom and his bed would have originally sat right there. Take a look at that beautiful fireplace, that mirrored fireplace, just incredible detail. just love everything about this. Now let's go back up here and we got to take in, I mean, if you hire somebody to do freaking Sistine Chapel in your bedroom and a vlogger gets in here to vlog, that vlogger better make sure he shows that beautiful ceiling. I honestly, I can't believe I'm in here. The whole time he was taking us around, showing us things, I was just, you know, <laughs> speechless almost. I, I really just didn't know what to say or do. I just couldn't believe I was seeing this. And my friends were exactly the same way. This was just to see someone put the care and the time, not only of the owner now, but for Liberace to do this much. It should be preserved. You know, it absolutely should be. And then we notice this is, this is such a small piano. It's actually smaller than a baby grand piano. 
like a baby baby grand so yeah right there that's where Liberace's bed would have been crazy can you believe we're here <laughs> wow I just every day I'm grateful I get to do this I'm get, grateful that people like were nice enough to see how much people could benefit and get excited by getting to see inside here and he was nice enough to share it with us so much beautiful art in this house and on that ceiling all right now i didn't give it quite the justice it deserves by giving you all of the angles of that beautiful tub so let's take a look at it here yeah that's one of the first things i think i ever saw of liberace actually when i very first started looking into him on uh youtube myself i think it was that intro to his shows and the owner said he wanted to leave some things so that you can kind of see the originality so things like the uh the cracking right here he left things like that in just a few places that was done intentionally this is so cool man so take a look inside liberace shower beautiful marble shower right beside the tub that we just saw now one of the really mega cool things that they pointed out to us when we took this tour is right here okay so you see on that glass it says i didn't get dressed like this to go unnoticed isn't that great so he says that um when ted turner's brother originally bought the house this middle drawer has a false bottom right here and nobody ever bothered to look in it nobody ever noticed so when he bought the house there was a false bottom as you can see that would have been right here and inside there that was full of liberace's jewelry <laughs> so since they bought the house they got all the jewelry that came with it in that little hidden compartment. So, if you ever buy anything that someone famous owned, they might have been like that. They might have been someone that stashed things away. Look at that, that plywood picture. Isn't that great? And once again, another Baldwin. Like I said, he had a piano just about in every room because there's one right here and there's one right here and then we came in through here just so you remember where we're at we came in through there and there's the player piano right there so now we are going to leave his private bedroom bathroom area and we're going to go back to where we started the front of the house and we're going to go up the stairwell and we're going to take a look upstairs Just want you guys to uh, really get to enjoy this. I just can't believe that he was able to track down so much. I mean, think of how much time that must have taken. And he said he just had to kind of keep looking for where things had been auctioned and where they had been sold and go from there. So now we just walked in from here, from the right into here, and this is where we started. So we've been through that room. There's the front door. Now the story with this staircase is incredible. Liberace apparently saw this in Paris in like a ladies bar, like a, uh, like a strip club kind of thing, and um, wanted it, wanted it real bad. And the problem was that it was all one piece and they couldn't take it apart. So he had to ship it all as one piece and basically fit it into the house. So it cost him $75,000 just to ship it. That's not the purchase price, that was just to ship it. And you'll notice that it actually goes up here so they had to form this whole section around here 
around the staircase. So let's do it. And it's not a full staircase. You can see that, that it's actually like there's gaps in here. So just so you get an idea. And this was taking us up to the Moroccan room. Now, this section over here are now offices that they uh, do a little business out of, but they said he had two pianos in there and those were his rehearsals. He would do rehearsals in there. Wasn't enough to have <laughs> pianos all over the house, but gotta have a rehearsal room too. So now, this leads us to the Moroccan room, and you can see, in honor of Liberace's mother, a few gambling machines. There's that beautiful stairwell. $75,000 just to move it, can you imagine? Yeah. And then this, is where he used to entertain his friends. This was the Moroccan room. Now get this, like I mentioned, Barbara Streisand was his opening act, so he's really who noticed that she was good, and when people wouldn't listen to her, he'd go out there and say, hey, everyone stop and listen to this girl for 10 minutes until I come out, she's really good. <laughs> and so Barbara Streisand would have hung out here, when Michael Jackson and he were hanging out, Michael Jackson would have hung out here. Mae West, just anybody through history. This was his hangout lounge. And take a look at these tiles, they're copper tiles. And the owner said, you know, when I bought the house, a few of them were missing, or some of them were cracked. And he said, wouldn't you know it that one of the cracked ones, when I looked behind it, it had the name of the manufacturer and I tracked them down and he said they still had the mold and were able to make exact moldings and make exact replacements for what he needed. I said, dude, <laughs> if you were ever wondering if you were meant to buy this house or to, to save this house, that should have told you right there. And he said, you know what, what Liberace loved about this place, one of the things was that out this window was, at the time, pretty much desert sand and out this window you could see the Vegas Strip out there and of course he performed at the Hilton so you can actually see those right over there he was only about five six minute drive away look at that fireplace have you ever seen anything like it I mean good grief just incredible and look, those are the tiles I was talking about look at those just every little detail to this place is just magnificent. The furniture is just perfect for the room. Can you just imagine? He was telling us, he said a room like this was very common back then because of how hot it was outside. They would have this air conditioned or maybe have a little heat coming in the evenings for parties. Look at the bar. And then that also has some glass that says, Nobody will believe in you unless you believe in yourself, Liberace. Isn't that amazing? What a tour of this place, huh? And then when we get done, you've pretty much seen a bulk of everything that we were gonna show you inside. I'll give you another look at the outside. Because one of the things that's very deceiving about this place is that from the outside, it does not look this big at all. But then you start walking through it and it's incredibly spacious. Not just the house itself, but every single room is spacious. How do you, I mean, I, <laughs> unbelievable that he was able to, to do that because the outside, like I said, is so deceiving. Even though, you know, that they built that add-on where the pool once was still a big house so we're now walking down Liberace's stairway to the front door and that my friends 
was our tour of the Liberace Mansion. I hope you all enjoyed this. Holy cow, I can't believe that we are getting to see all of that. Everything inside plus out here. How cool is today? So those are the front doors that we just came out of. Over here you can see there was a parking space over here. But right in here is actually where those orange couches were that I showed you. That was that very first room that we explored. There's that entertaining room up there. The greenhouse looking room. The Moroccan room is what it's actually called. And then we'll go over here, because you can see the historic designation plaque right here, thanks to Martin Ravenhill, who's the owner. I love his personality. He was so great, because like I said, what he said when he found out that it was for sale was he said, I couldn't believe such a historic property like this would be for sale and for so cheap, because he said, I guess, you know, where I come from in England, we preserve historic places like that. So it, to him, it was kind of like surprising that it would be for sale for someone to tear down and demolish. And you can hear that truck from here, but you couldn't hear a thing inside. Little outdoor sitting area here. And I love that the gate has L's going all the way around it, the Liberace L's. And then look at that big place for cars or entertaining or anything. That is uh, very most definitely where Liberace's lim limousine would have picked him up. Because I've seen footage, I believe Scott Thorson was the driver for it, coming in this gate down there and then exiting through this one. And you know Liberace had those just insanely beautiful sequined and mirrored limousine so that would have really been something to see at that time that L and that great and then I believe that these doors here are what lead to since remember I told you it was two residents originally that's where that marble piano would be and the pool would have been originally right in that section yeah two houses put together smart move now i think we're going to go inside and wrap it up all right my friends i hope you enjoyed this vlog thank you all for watching thank you to the homeowner here for allowing us to see this without him none of this would have been possible and thank you lena cruz francisco Lisa and Kimberly Chamblin for becoming my newest Patreons. We'll see you all next time in Las Vegas, Nevada. Have a great night and good... Good... Good, good... Bye. Mm -hmm.